All right, YouTube. What we got here is the QSC Powerlight 1.8, kind of a vintage amp at this point. One of the first of the very light amplifiers, I believe it is Class D. And if it's not, I'm sure someone will correct me. Uh, I think it weighed in, jeez, it can't even be 15 pounds. Pretty gnarly. For inputs, it has one of these combination XLR quarter inch. There's another one here. I've been using this amp for only one channel, so. <clears throat> but the unsatisfying thing are these. This is it for outputs. Banana. I don't like them for road use. Uh, they tend to come out. They're not real reliable. You're relying a lot on friction. Yeah. Step was to remove all the screws, which I already did. And now I'm going to take this cover off so you can see what we have to deal with inside. This thing's a pretty neat little amp, really. Uh, does all of its cooling right here through the middle. That sort of big fan way. But if you notice, there's really no room because of that printed circuit board and where those connectors are to sneak those speak on connectors in right there. And I definitely want them to terminate out the back. So there's no room around this fan area either. The only logical spot for them is in there. Now, there's not a lot of room in there, but there's just enough to get the job done. All right, I've taken a picture of this little label with my phone before I started doing any drilling, except for this piece. So that if I ever need to reference any of this information again, like the bridging information, I'll have it in my phone, print it out and tape it to the top of the amp or something, I don't know. But I need to drill into this spot to be able to have the room required to do what I want to do, so... The last time I did this, I damaged one of these components in here by drilling a little too fast and pushing through. Trying to avoid that. And I did avoid it. Good. vacuum never ceases to make me chuckle it's amazing that it still does anything all the wheels have fallen off except for that one that thing is the biggest hunk of crap I've ever had in the shop all right so I'm real close to fitting but not quite so I've got this little file It'll be a little tough to see on camera but there is a little half round radius to that and that's what I'm going to use to bridge the gap Pretty nice. Go around the sides with a little more light. There's the one I was looking for in the first place, which was the eight. And by golly, it's an eight. I don't suppose the motorhome will miss. This bit of, like, bit of wire, and it is, let's see, 12 gauge, 600 volt, good stuff. i to make the closer one first. But in this case, white is going to become red. Green is going to become black. My golly, I'm going to give her a shot. Whew. 
It is a wee bit bigger. Now let's see if I can make it bigger than that without destroying it. Looks like a sixteenth. Well, that went pretty easy. Yeah, I do believe I can get almost all the strands through. Tin the end of the iron here. Yeah, it's been sitting on for too long. Aluminum rivets. I used to hate rivets. It sort of implied you couldn't take it apart again, but not really. There's a waste product involved when you take it apart because you drill them out, but they're still able to be taken apart. Good. There's one fully installed. So I've gone ahead and got these both installed and put some that high heat hot glue on here to make sure nothing moves. Ran the wires through here, nothing to chafe on except the cover which is not ideal but so be it. And then after I put the resistors back on I covered it in hot glue. A lot of times you can keep less expensive components or less expensive amps and stuff like that electronics. If you can get in there and hot glue everything so it can't move early enough in its lifespan, you can uh, make it last a lot longer. In fact, some stuff on top of other stuff. But, you know, that's a real efficient way to have a shop. I will say my piles of stuff do come in handy in that they are left all about the garage. A lot of times, about the time I need a tool, it's about the time I find it. But the next stack that tips over might have the thing that I want to be working on next. Just didn't know it yet. All right, so the last thing to do here is to test them. So the problem with testing things like this, other than the connector problem, I'm only going to be able to do one side at a time, and it's going to be possibly distorted. Just have to wait and see. So the problem with that, other than that, is that this is YouTube. And because this is YouTube, I can't play anything that is probably written. Unless I either A, have permission to use it, or I am the creator of that. So I'm going to play for you a song that I wrote which I will put on my other channel, Ben Frog Music, for those who are interested, and I will make sure there's a link in the description and somewhere here above my head, if you're into this sort of thing. Which I know a lot of you may not be, but I'm only doing it because I have to. Ooh, there's noise out of it already. So bring it back to a place that is so fast. So fast. From a time when you're recorded on a four house. Music bumping in the back. You should be rolling with a light wall. Tires having you feeling like a threat. Yeah. Thanks a lot for watching. Uh, this was a cool little project. I know this is applicable to all the rest of you folks who might want to put some speak on inputs in your amp that doesn't have them. 
Either way, make sure you comment and hit the like button. Please subscribe as well. Uh, the comments, I try to answer every single comment these days. So if you get, if you do say something, I will get back to you eventually.